How's it going, everyone? Welcome to the Elite Battle League Week 5 Roundup with my usual co-host. He's back. It's really Timmy B. How you doing today, good sir? I'm doing great, my friend. We had a great final regular season of the EBL, and I am just getting a little bit more excited for the playoffs because they're coming next week. Yeah, the right around the corner, ladies and gentlemen. This Saturday, the playoffs do kick off for the Elite Battle League. Uh, and like Timmy just said, week five was insane. It was uh, quite a bit of action going on. Um, and we'll get to it in just a second. Oh, um, I'm also your usual host, uh, Lonely Hermit. Uh, I probably should have mentioned that too. Uh, both our links, of course, are down below. Alongside the links for all the coaches in the Elite Battle League, go check them out down below so that you guys do not miss a single match. If you waited the whole regular season and you want to get into the playoffs, because usually that's what happens with sports, uh, then by all means, get into the playoffs now. Uh, go check out all the coaches. Unfortunately, a couple of coaches are out, um, but still go support them nonetheless. We'll get to that in just a second. But uh, I say let's just let's just head right into this. And um, our first matchup of the week was the LA Inferno versus the Iowa Incineroar. The LA Inferno walked away with a very tight, close 6-5 win over the Iowa Incineroar. Definitely a match <laughs> worthy of a rivalry. Definitely a match worthy of a rivalry. It was, a, it was a very intense match. I feel like, honestly, genuinely, neither team really made a misplay. It was just, it, it was just, uh, just that good of a match it just came down to the wire it was just so back and forth trading blows left and right uh and then eventually it came down to leafion outspeeding uh the um tapu lele from iowa killed it and then it did some chip damage on incineroar enough so that hippowdon could come in and, and kill the incineroar and finish it um i feel like neither of our game plans really went to fruition i'm gonna be perfectly honest with you even though i won my game plan did it just kind of fell apart after a bit uh but it didn't matter because at the end, you know, still walked away with the win. But uh, I, I mean, that's I said in my video, this is from a non-biased point of view, but that's been my favorite match this whole season. Um, I've I've really enjoyed watching it back twice, uh, three times. Actually, I was editing, watching, watching Landon's point of view and then recording Landon's point of view. So I watched it three times. Like that's so much I've enjoyed watching it back. Um, it was just so intense, so back and forth. Uh, and I'd love to hear your opinion on it, uh, Timmy. Yeah, you. I think you said it best was that no team really made any mistakes. I mean, maybe a small move here or there, but nothing that completely altered the whole course of the battle, of course. And it just got to a point where the Iowa and Cinewar just really didn't have any options. I mean, looking at Landon's perspective and watching his, his side as well, he was just like, all right, well, he has two or three mods that are super effective against my remaining two or three mods. So it's just like, well, who's going to win this one? Clearly not me. Um, so this was a, a huge battle. Uh, unfortunately for the Iowa and Cinderor, they started off strong, started off 2-0 and there at the yeah. top of the division. Now they're slipping into the playoffs. Tough match against the Kentucky Kingler. But I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed this battle. You said it as well. It was very entertaining. Not too many people made mistakes. I think given in the rematch with the same teams, I could see you winning nine times out of 10. I could see Landon winning nine times out of 10. Yeah. So uh, this was a very even match and it was definitely fun to watch. And yeah, unfortunately for the uh, Iowa and Cinderor, it just wasn't their day again. But hey, LA Inferno kind of riding a little bit of a hot streak right now. So uh, that's huge for the playoffs. And we'll talk about that later. But man, good win. And it, it was great to, uh, to see the battle. Uh, thank you, by the way, for the, for the, uh compliments um you're welcome yeah. it, <laughs> it was it was a very intense match uh, being a part of it i can tell you it was very intense especially towards the end um at one point i called it when his vanilla x killed my my uh both i was not Ooh. really expecting it to kill my corvin <laughs> i'm gonna be 100 percent honest i was not expecting that Landon so when was that, it, so happy when he that was happened. hyped he was like yeah. Yeah, we did it we took yeah. it down <laughs> Which, I mean, that's, so that's a reaction you need to have against that Corvin. I mean, that yeah. is that is a great Pokemon you have there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so I kind of called it there. I was I planned around Tapu Lele outspeeding everything but Landorus on my team. So the fact that Leafeon got the Leaf Blade off, uh, I knew from that point on. I, I Unless Incineroar got a crit. That was like the only way. Even then, I don't know if Hippowdon maybe, maybe it's a hard, maybe would have taken a crit. Um, because it took that darkest layer kind of pretty pretty well um, But it was it was very close an amazing match regardless I mean, I feel like you guys can't really deny me this. It was one of the best matches of the season. It was so Without fun it, it was just so fun to be a part of so fun to watch um, And yeah, I just really love this match 
Uh, so GG's London, you did incredible. I think we both did incredible in this match. Um, and like we said, the miscues, like you said, the miscues in this in this match weren't enough to change the match. Like not mm -hmm. not even close. Um, so yeah, I think we both did really well. It just so happens I got the luck of the draw now. <laughs> and, um, and by the way, when it came to playoffs, that match didn't matter in terms of who was going to make the playoffs because our next matchup, we have the New Brunswick Ninetales versus the Everglade Entes. I mentioned it last week. Uh, if the New Brunswick Ninetales lost, that meant everyone else in the Mega Division was in the playoffs. And uh, the New Brunswick Ninetales lost in very frustrating, in a very frustrating way. Uh, the Everglade Entes stalled out the last three minutes with Protect and not picking their moves, uh, which is something, uh, I'll give you guys a little insight, something that we are going to be looking into for the Elite Battle League next season. Um, because stalling out with moves is one thing, not picking moves is another thing. Um, I've been kind of guilty of it. Uh, I'll, I'll be the first to admit it. Uh, there's video proof as well, so <laughs> I can't really lie. Um, but it was a frustrating match because would Foos have won it beyond that? Because the Pokemon that were left when Foos started stalling were, were Rotom, Wa uh, Rotom Wash, Colossal, and Blacephalon. And then for New Brunswick, it was Dusknoir and Snorlax. And I feel like maybe Snorlax can run away with that one. Honestly, I feel like Snorlax can maybe run away with that one. If not, I don't, it's tough. I don't know. If the timer wasn't a thing, would Foos still have been able to pull it out? Like, you look at their bonds. I feel like Snorlax doesn't really get past Blacephalon, but Dusk Noir does. It's a really tough toss up in terms of how it would have shaken up had Foos not stalled. Um, I feel like maybe Jack would have taken it. And if Jack would have taken it, Jack would have been in the playoffs and Foos wouldn't have been. Um, but instead, we're looking at the alternate outcome. It was a 4 3 scoreline um, because it, like, it did push the timer, obviously. But uh, a very frustrating watch. Uh, it, was, it was really hard to watch. Um, so, what did you what did you think about this one right here? Yeah, I actually enjoyed Foose's strategy because it happened in during the course of the battle, right? Like we we know about stalling. I'm even talking with Matty Ice, our commissioner, about potentially figuring on some sort of penalty or th something for future seasons. But I really enjoyed this strategy, and I think it was a good strategy, knowing that that was the only way he needed to win. He changed the strategy halfway through the battle, saying like, "Hey, like." Yeah. I have this good opportunity, I'm going to do this. It'd be different if before the match he was like, I'm going to take out one of his Pokemon and then just stall. Like, that was yeah. not his game yeah. plan at all. Uh, but I thought this was a good battle. I'm kind of with you, though. I do think, and I think this is why Foos made that strategic play, being like, hey, Snorlax can pack a little bit of a punch. I, I just didn't, I don't think Foos would have won had he not done this. But hey, whatever it takes to win... If that, ha if that was the championship match, do whatever it takes to win the championship. So this was a great battle on the New Brunswick Ninetales as well. Uh, unfortunately, they can't make the playoffs. If only everybody could. It's not how it works. But I thought this was a great battle. New Brunswick Ninetales and Jack Nishin knew exactly what to do. They had Foos on the ropes, but Foos just made that strategy, and he was able to. And and he yeah. knew it too. He had Protect. He had some switches and, and things like that. So it'd be different if he just didn't have those moves or whatever and he was like all right i'm gonna take forever to to, to make yeah. my moves and then hopefully you know we can survive a couple of hits or, or two so yeah. I, I think great strategy by Foose, but i think uh or Foose, excuse me and then better better battling and a better strategy from jack side but Foose made those necessary in-game adjustments in battle or game never the same thing <laughs> yeah definitely uh jack showed a good amount of fight these last three weeks good strategies definitely a lot better than his 0 and 3 start mm -hmm. um so it's just frustrating i think to go out like that i think if this was like mid-season it wouldn't be as frustrating for him but the fact that it was the final game of the season and it was his opportunity to get into the playoffs and he lost like that yeah but then again if he won actually now that i think about it if he won it would have been a three-way tie between new brunswick everglade and iowa mm -hmm. and it would have came down to differential which i think maybe jack still would have been out of the playoffs big maybe i'm not really 100 percent sure uh it would depend on the score line by the end of the match but uh in the long run maybe it didn't necessarily matter but i think what was most frustrating for him was the fact that his season ended like that you know mm -hmm. um so sorry jack um hopefully you know you don't take that loss too hard i'm sure he's not bothered by it now it's been like a week or maybe he is i don't know he's still having nightmares about it <laughs> uh <laughs> but we'll be seeing foos in the playoffs so good uh good luck to you against me i guess we'll, we'll talk about that later um next up we have uh 
I would say the highlight match of the week, but I'm going to take that. Um, <laughs> uh, but we do have a very interesting match. The Kentucky Kinglers versus the Detroit Luxuries. Another back-to-back -back weeks where we see another 6-0 sweep. Mm -hmm. Dialga, you're obvious. Mega Division MVP um, walked away with six kills. Uh, another sweep where one Pokemon picked up six kills, by the way. It's usually how it goes, but... Uh, sometimes, you know, maybe another Pokemon will come in. Not the Pokemon you probably would have expected to get the six kills, though. Yeah. But you probably wouldn't be surprised if I told you it was Dialga. Uh, Dialga's moveset was very good for all of Max's team. Um, but I do want to throw out there that Max did just move. He did. He's going through, like, some life stuff right now. So maybe he didn't have nearly as much time as he would have wanted to prepare. Um, obviously, life is a priority. Anything going on in your life is a priority. Uh, not trying to make a full-on excuse for him. But at the same time, he did just move. He's going through some... He's doing some stuff. So, again, he probably didn't have a ton of time to prepare for, for Derek's team. But then again, you look at Dialga's moveset and like all of max's mons weren't really good for the dog uh, um, to at least take him out quickly because the dog just bodied everyone it was weird because it was kind of a slow build up because he killed like the first three mons and when in that process of him killing the first three mons i was kind of like uh okay like dog was getting off to a really hot start cool you know that's probably gonna help him coast in this match when it got the third kill i was like all right well derek's probably got this one even if dog goes down um but then like i don't know it, it's this weird feeling leading up to the fourth kill where i was just like wait a minute is he about to sweep with dialga <laughs> like i looked at the rest of max's mons and i was like that he can easily kill those three mons left so i and then yeah it happened obviously um and yeah so impressive win from the kinglers what a way to head into the playoffs um they definitely cemented their first place spot as if it already wasn't going to be cemented they just did it in a very emphatic fashion um so what did you think about the sweep here timmy yeah i mean you just said everything that i was gonna say dialga was just an amazing pokemon and then yeah like halfway through that battle you said after that slow build and then i looked at the moveset and i was like oh he's gonna sweep him <laughs> like uh, yeah. and, and that's just the way the cookie crumbles sometimes and yeah max and the detroit luxuries were going through uh, a bunch of life changes in the last week but i don't think that would have been good enough even if he was prepared Derek's team yeah. is just one of the best teams in this league right now he would yeah. have came uh with a good plan it could have been a little bit of a closer match but I do do still think the Kentucky Kinglers would have pulled it away but yeah you said everything I mean unfortunately for the luxuries we got some pineapple pizza uh <laughs> having to be eaten so that'll be fun to see uh, that reaction of course Kentucky Kinglers solidifying that top seed I predicted them to win this division so I'm happy that I was correct and we'll see they they can make a solid run in the playoffs and potentially win this championship so uh we'll find out about that but yes good sweep by uh Dialga uh and just to mention that the Detroit luxuries are the other team like uh Timmy just mentioned are the other team that are missing out in the playoffs in the Dynamax yeah. division um walking away with the same record as in the Brunswick Ninetales uh one and four I believe um I do want to point out that I do have it written in my notebook here um I had done predictions and I actually got the Mega Division to a T. Whoa! Um, yeah, I got Kentucky first, Everglades second, me third, Landon fourth, and Jack fifth. Uh, I'm not going to show the records because they're not very nice. Um, I was going purely... This was preseason. This was before we saw any matches. Um, I did uh, mix up the Dynamax Division. Um, I had Detroit in second, but clearly that didn't work out. Um, so the, <laughs> the Dynamax Division is all messed up. But uh, I got the Mega Division, right? So clearly I knew something uh kind of some kind of fortune teller here um but yeah great sweep from derek again a great momentum boost heading into the playoffs he might not feel great about it but i mean a six l sweep heading into the playoffs you gotta you gotta feel good about that right oh, i mean yeah. you gotta be feeling good definitely um so yeah we'll just move on from that one and spare max any more uh any more shame <laughs> moving on <laughs> We have the Miami Dragonites versus the Philadelphia Flygons. Uh, Miami walked away with a 6-3 win in that one. Uh, another win where just... Mm, this is probably... Miami's first week and last week seem to have been their strongest wins of the season. Mm -hmm. Uh, because this is another match very reminiscent of week one for both teams, really, because Miami controlled week one and they won, obviously, in week one. And they, they did really well in that week one matchup uh, against the team. I cannot remember right now. It was the Detroit Luxuries. Um, they dominated that week one. They dominated this week as well. Whereas the Philadelphia Flygons back in week one faced uh, the Redwood Meows and uh, 
some miscues in the match costed them that one and same here um some miscues in this match uh, a couple of them i don't know if there was a specific reason behind sacking my low tick against rillaboom or dynamaxing celesteela i felt like those weren't necessarily the best decisions um but then again i'd have to watch it back to see if there's really any other uh ways he could have gotten around some of the pokemon that uh miami had but i want to say that rillaboom has in my opinion been miami's mvp like i know mm -hmm. some other pokemon might have gone i think zashin has gotten an mvp this season but rillaboom has been fantastic for the team i mean it just picks up the kills it picks up the right kills it needs to pick up it kills the pokemon to gain control of the match and it, it nearly pulled off a massive comeback last week um and rillaboom for me personally i don't know if, if guanaco thinks the same um rillaboom has been his best pokemon in my opinion because it just picks up the right kills it picks up the right kills it needs to pick up it gains control of the match when it needs to uh we saw it especially against the luxuries when it picked up those early kills and then just they were able to coast uh the rest of that match um so it, it's definitely been i in my opinion miami's best pokemon uh, Philadelphia's hot streak ended very abruptly and unfortunately we're heading into the playoffs still not on a very good streak here because um, that match was not the best um, from them not the best performance but uh, Miami heading in the playoffs feeling good feeling good first place in the Dynamax division much like Kentucky uh, but with a 3-2 record um, oh, no I'm sorry 4-1 no 4-1 they only lost once I'm sorry um, Philadelphia again tough loss again reminiscent of week one against the males um what did you think about this match up here to me yeah this is going to be interesting as well because this is a rematch in the playoffs back-to-back -back weeks we're going to be seeing the miami dragonites versus the philadelphia flygon so that's going to be really mm -hmm. interesting as well as our next matchup so the dynamax division uh two rematches from week five going into the playoffs so it's going to be interesting to see uh strategies and we'll, we'll talk about playoffs in just a second but to me this was kind of like uh, the Kent King, uh, kentucky kinglers excuse me it was kind of slow to start and then once the Miami Dragonites got out those couple of Pokemon that they needed to get out, at that point it was game over. Like, mm -hmm. even even Guanaco was like, yep, all right, I win this. <laughs> like, so the Philadelphia yeah. Flygons came with a good strategy and everything like that, but at the end of the day, Miami Dragonite's one of the best teams in this, and they're, they're going to win these type of matches, especially that Rillaboom. And I do think a, a key for them, and I've said this uh, before, his uh, uh, Miami Dragonite's team has a lot of starter Pokemon. I mean, in, in Talon... <laughs> yeah. And, and, and Rillaboom, like it's a lot of solid starter Pokemon where it's like that that was a good strategy with the draft and we're seeing that in the battle. I agree with you. I think the Rillaboom uh, could easily be one of the MVPs of the league despite maybe not having those stats of, of the uh, KD ratio or anything like that. So a solid yeah. match. Excited to see the rematch as well in the playoffs. Would not be surprised if the Philadelphia Flygons pulled off an upset next week. Yeah, absolutely. You, you still really can't count them out. We've seen what they can do throughout the season, so you really can't count the Flygons out. Yeah, they might have lost two weeks in a row, but uh, you really can't count them out. We saw what they were capable of. We saw what they did against another balanced team uh, or other balanced teams. Uh, it's it's very possible that Philadelphia can pull off a win. Um, and yeah, so uh i'll make that actually i'll make this announcement after after we go over the next match it is the atlanta Braviary versus the san diego sylveons the atlanta Braviary watched walked away with a 6-1 win uh nearly another sweep <laughs> nearly another sweep if santa Conda didn't die mm -hmm. uh it was a very close win cartana is your dynamax division mvp for the second week in a row the third week in a row that atlanta walks away with an mvp um so cartana racked up four kills it would have died it would have died to meowth if if Tara would have faked out, um, but uh, it probably still would have walked away with the, with the MVP. I'm pretty sure. Uh, maybe Rillaboom would have gotten it. it would have been close there. Um, and then Excadrill racked up a couple kills in that one too. A match where, unfortunately, Atlanta, <laughs> unfortunately for San Diego, Atlanta just kind of controlled the match. Um, it was just kill after kill. And once 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 a once an Ultra Beast, an offensive Ultra Beast gets going. It, it's really hard to stop it um and cartana just got going and it just uh swept the last i think it swept the last four mons i think is what it did uh and it just it did what it had to do um came in and killed uh swept up the end and like i said ultra beasts are difficult to stop once they get going um what did you think about this one timmy 
Yeah, I think uh, the, the move of the match, the move of the week maybe, maybe even the whole season, was that Cartana surviving on one HP from that drain punch. And mm -hmm. obviously a very fast attacker, so it took out the bus wall. Yes, the fake out was huge. Could have been a move. Even Matty I said that uh, halfway through saying, like, you should have done that. But I think the San Diego Sylveons are doing as best as they can. She even said at the yeah. end of the video, like, hey, this is not my team. This is the Redwood Meows team once I can draft my own team. So I think that the Sylveons are going to be a very scary team come come season three of the EBL once that they can get their own team and their own Pokemon and their own strategies. It's going to be a lot of fun to watch that. And we even said that, too. Uh, the mm -hmm. uh, Braviary, they went down 0-2 because they played the Incineroar. They played Miami Dragonites. We said that they're going to end up probably in second or third in the division. They're going to get a couple of wins. They're going to bounce back. I mean, they were in the finals last year. So this was a great match to watch. It was fun to watch uh, with the Stone fam. Uh, it, would, <laughs> yeah. uh, it would be interesting to see maybe in season three and beyond if we can work away because I did... I mean, and he, Matt even said it in his video being like, I'm not going to say my strategy or anything like that because hmm, being sat right next yeah. to each other. So yeah. maybe, maybe yeah. we'll have to set up some sort of, you know, soundproof cubicle system for them in, in their future <laughs> battles. Because I do enjoy uh, listening to you guys when everybody's like, okay, mm -hmm. well, all right, th this happens. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Whereas Matt, is just like, all right, this Pokemon's coming in. I'm going to use this move, this, that, that. I'm kind of like, Bro, I'm, I'm confused. You're saying this and that too much. Uh, <laughs> um, but it was a great battle. And once again, another rematch next weekend. Would not be yes. surprised if the Sylveons pulled out another upset as well. I think these were both close yeah. battles despite the score from the Dynamax division. Yeah, absolutely. I totally agree with that one. Um, again, Cartana just got going at the right mm -hmm. time. At, at the exact right time. It just got going and racked up the kills it needed to get. Um, and you're right, if Buzzwool kills Kartana, Buzzwool maybe is the beast boost that, or the, the ultra beast that gets going. Mm -hmm. um, so, big play, and unfortunately, that's like the second week in a row where a little bit of luck doesn't really go San Diego's way. Because, yeah, like you mentioned, again, if Kartana dies, Buzzwool gets going, uh, and we'd be looking at probably a different scoreline. Maybe, maybe Maddie still could have walked away with a big maybe, um, but uh, it would have been a lot closer for sure. Um, so before we get into the rankings here, I do want to say that, uh, the, at the end of the season, we will be doing uh, mega division and dynamax division team of the season. Um, the way it's going to work is that each team is going to pick their, um, their personal best mons. It doesn't necessarily have to be KD. It could be your, it's going to be their choice in terms of who they felt uh, was the best Pokemon on their team throughout the season. And then the six Pokemon is going to be filled up by the best performing Pokemon of the division. Um, so that's going to be coming after the finals yeah. alongside, of course, the finals MVP. Um, so look forward to that, coaches. You have something else to play for here in these final few weeks and something to start thinking about. Start Something to start... Wait, does that make sense? Something to start thinking about? Something to, I, I don't know. Does, does that make sense? Does I, that sound right? Yeah, sure, why not? yeah whatever it's all right i i english well um so yeah there's you guys uh something to look forward to right now um but let's go over the final rankings of the mega and dynamax divisions uh for the mega division in first place we have the kentucky kinglers with a four and one record plus 11 differential uh the Everglade entes in second three and two uh at an even zero differential uh the la inferno in third three and two with a negative five differential uh, the Iowa Incineroar in fourth, two and three with a negative two differential, and the New Brunswick Ninetales one and four in fifth with a negative two differential. The only team in the Mega Division to miss on the playoffs. Sorry, Jack. Uh, <laughs> and for the Dynamax Division, uh, we have Miami, the Miami Dragonites in first with a four and record plus eight differential. The Atlanta Braviary in second, three and two with a plus eleven differential. The last two weeks carried that differential. Um, the San Diego Sylveons in third. Two and three record, uh, negative four differential. The Philadelphia Flygons in fourth, two and three with a negative two differential. And the Detroit Luxuries in fifth, one and four with a negative 15 differential. Rough, rough for them. Yeah. And the other team that missed out on the playoffs. Um, that sweep did not help. <laughs> that no, sweep did, did not, not help. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's go over the first round playoff matchups uh, for the Mega Division. We have a rematch that could get ugly, could be something that it's a huge, huge, big brain play from the Iowa Incineroar Landon. 
Um, we have the Iowa Cinnabar, number four seed versus the number one seed, Kentucky Kinglers. Now, last time we saw this matchup, Cinderace was just running rampant all over uh, Landon's team. Uh, it racked up a couple kills like mid match and then racked up the last couple kills to walk away with the MVP that week. Um, and this is the big question and one of the big questions that we had heading into playoffs last season was do you revolve your game plan around cinderace now the iowa and cinderace were the only team that were truly victim of the cinderace um because they, that was really the only match that it shined every other match has been shut down or not used one or the other um so that was the only match that it really exploded uh so the question for Landon is, do you revolve your game plan around Cinderace? The answer is no. We learned that lesson last season, but at the same time, what are you going to do to try and counter Cinderace? Should it come in, rack up a couple kills like it did last time? Um, I, The Kinglers have just looked really good this season, um, and you kind of have to back the number one seed here, especially considering the way they ended their season and the way they were able to control their match um, back when these two played uh, was a week three. So I, I'm going to bag Kinglers on this one. I feel like Landon tries to come up with a game plan for Cinderace, but Cinderace might just be a little too much still again. Um, we'll see. Again, it, it, it's 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 tough to try and predict Cinderace because it could have a, 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 an entirely different moveset uh, every week. But uh, what are you thinking about this matchup here? Yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth, and that's the thing too. You can plan for Cin Cinderace might not even show up, right? Like That's like the beauty of having nine Pokemon per team and only battling with six, you don't know who's going to come into the battle. So it's going to be seen that the balance of Infernament's planning and Landon's planning for Cinderace, you can't put your entire game plan on taking out Cinderace and, and this and that, but you still need to have a solid plan. And, but at the end of the day, Kentucky Kinglers are might even arguably be the best team in this whole league, uh, let alone the Mega Division. So I got to go yeah. with the Kentucky Kinglers. I think this was a, will be a solid first season for our friend Landon, a.k.a. in front of him at the Iowa Incineroar. I definitely uh, can see a lot like I see a lot of Derek in him, where Derek last year was kind of <laughs> like he had a couple of wins, you know, made the playoffs and, and all that stuff. And now look at where Derek is being the number one seed in his division yeah. and one of the best teams. So I could definitely see that from Landon in, in season three, of course. But I got to go with the Kentucky Kinglers. I got to go with the number one number one seed. Yeah, definitely. I feel like the Kingler, I, I, I feel like this match might be a little bit closer. Mm -hmm. I think Landon will do well to plan around uh, Derek's other Pokemon um, because let's see if I can find my notes from that matchup. I think uh, I can't exactly remember who else racked up kills in that one it was cinderace racked up four and dialga and primarina got one each um the energy oh that's right there was a bit of luck going Landon's way now when if i remember correctly because quagsire got the double crit on primarina and burned it um but then primarina obviously killed it with an energy ball and like i said cinderace got a couple kills mid-match and then got a couple kills towards the end as well so Maybe Landon brings a different team, a different core, uh, or I feel like maybe the core might stay the same, but different fringe mods in terms of like Alolan Raichu, um, or maybe he doesn't bring Quagsire this time. Who knows? Um, so I'm, yeah, that, I'm still gonna side with the Kinglers, but I would not be surprised if Landon made this match a lot closer than than it was the first time around. Um, so yeah, looking forward to that one for sure. The other playoff matchup in the Mega Division is the number three seed LA Inferno versus the number two seed Everglid Entes. Last time we saw this matchup, it was not pretty for the LA Inferno. It was not a pretty matchup. Uh, I'll be the first to admit it. Um, but nowadays, the LA Inferno are starting to figure out their team a little bit better. Um, just a little bit. Uh, so it's. I think the onus is going to be more so on the Everglid Entes because uh, the other Inferno have been trying different strategies recently, especially in that match against London. So uh, it's going to be up to Foos and the Evergood Entes to try and come up with something unique. Uh, they could potentially go with the same game plan as week one, a similar game plan, maybe not the same, but a similar game plan um, to see if that works out or shake it up and try something completely different. So it's going to be an interesting match rematch here. I think this is... Um, Probably one of the more interesting rematches because I think this time around it's not going to be the same. Um, I don't think LA Inferno is going to get zero kills. If anything, it's going to be like 6 1, where LA Inferno get at least one kill. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I'm going to back myself. I feel like maybe the rematch here uh, will benefit me. And like I said, I've been understanding my team a lot better over these last three weeks. Um, riding high on my three win streak, I guess. Um, 
but I, I you really can't you can't count Foos out. Foos is a fantastic battler. Um, so I, I'm, I'm gonna back myself. <laughs> I'm gonna back myself for this one. Um, who are you gonna pick, Timmy, for this one? Yeah, this is gonna be an interesting match. I think it might be the best match of the week and, and the first round of the playoffs just because you guys are just so equal. If this was flipped around where you were in second place and Foos was in third place or whatever, like, I would not be surprised either way. I think you are gonna get your revenge on Foos. I mean, a lot has changed in the past couple of weeks and since your loss to him. What I think is you're going to come with a good strategy. You're going to get the win. You're going to get the upset win. It's like, here's the thing, too. It's like, we got to pick an upset here and there. And it's like, we <laughs> talk about the Dynamax division. I said those teams could upset, but I probably won't be picking up. But I got to pick somebody to upset. That's just the sports fan in me and the sports better in me. It's that <laughs> there's always an upset. I'm going with the LA Inferno to beat the Everglade Entes. Yeah, <laughs> uh, that that is going to be a very fun rematch to watch um, and be a part of, obviously. Um, so I'm super pumped to get into that one. Now, you mentioned the Dynamax division, so I guess we'll head right into it. Uh, Timmy did mention that both matches in the Dynamax division are rematches from week five. That's just how it shook out with the results. Uh, so first up, we have the number four seed Philadelphia Flygons versus the number one seed Miami Dragonites. Uh, a tough one for the Flygons. They're coming off the back of two straight losses, whereas the Miami Dragonites coming off the back of just a good win. Um, they, the Miami Dragonites, we talked about it. They, it, the midseason weeks two through four, they stumbled, stumbled, and then fell. Um, but then they picked themselves back up week five. So again, it's it's possible for the Flygons to pull it off. Um, the strategy has to be just shock and all just throw off the dragonites early that's proven to at least mm -hmm. keep the matches close against the mammy dragonites just shock and all get them knocked down early and then put your foot on them keep them down uh throughout the rest of the match that's the hard part because only the new brunswick nine tails have been able to do that um is knock them down early and then keep them down for the rest of the match and that was largely thanks to arcanine um so I don't know if the Flygons can do it. I don't know if they can hold the Dragonites back um, that early into the match. Guanaco keeps keeps talking about some kind of sweeping strategy. Uh, so maybe maybe right off the rip, the Dragonites come up with something that's not gonna allow them to fall early. Um, and I'm kind of more confident in the planning around Miami than I am around Philadelphia right now. So I'm going to back the Miami Dragonites, and I'm sure that you agree. <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, yeah. And I think a key is now that this is the playoffs. Now it matters. Obviously, in the regular season, it still matters. But there are a lot of times where you might try this thing or this strategy, see what works, see what doesn't. I think the Miami Dragonites now know it's the playoffs. They're trying to defend their championship. And this is strictly just going to be a, I'm better than you. I'm going to beat you. So I'm going with Miami Dragonites. Could, could we see that sweep strategy? We'll see, but I, I, this one might not even be close. I won't say say that. I'll just say the Miami Dragon Knights will win this one. Okay. Okay. Uh, next up, we have the number three San Diego Silvians versus the number two Atlanta Braviary. The Atlanta Braviary, hottest team in the league, easily. So hot. Uh, they, <laughs> the last two weeks, even though his name is Matty Ice, you should change your name. Um, <laughs> he's walked away with a 12 1 scoreline across the last two weeks, which is incredible. Um, and uh, what was the, the score before that? Was it like 6 3 or something like that? So, regardless, he's been winning, he's just been winning non stop. Um, and I, I, you kind of have to back the bravery in this one because of how they've been performing and how they performed last week. Um, I know it's a different week, um, and something's gonna go differently. Maybe this week, Cartana dies to the buzz one, buzz will gets going. So, I don't think the same strategy comes out of the Sylveons. I feel like maybe Meowth doesn't show up this time around because it really didn't do anything, it just came in and died. So, I feel like Meowth doesn't show up in this one. Um, I feel like the rest of the team. Maybe not Ho, -Oh. I feel like Ho, uh, or maybe Ho -Oh against Cartana. It's it's tough. It's a bit of a toss up trying to figure out. Um, but I, I really don't see Meowth coming um, because I feel like that was just kind of a trolley move mm -hmm. that didn't really work out. Um, I mean, if it got the fake out on Cartana, that would, uh, that would have killed it. But at the same time, probably Atlanta still would have walked away with that one. Um, so I'm gonna back Atlanta in this one, but I feel like it's gonna be a lot closer than last week. I don't think it's gonna be nearly as as bad as a six one. Uh, Scoreline, I think it's gonna be close. I mean at least like six three something like that at least 
Um, I don't see it being a runaway win again. So uh, what do you think about this matchup? I agree with you. This is going to be a very close battle. It'll definitely be closer than what we just talked about a couple of minutes ago with their regular season match. Mm -hmm. I just think the Atlanta Brave Bear are the hottest team right now. They're one of the more experienced teams, one of the more veteran teams. I think Matty Ice gets the job done. I wouldn't be shocked if he went down early, though, because could get in his head. He's seeing that date with Gornaco in round two for the, mm. <laughs> the uh, Dynamax Division Championship, which is the rematch of the Season 1 Championship. So it could get into yeah. his head early, but at the end of the day, I think Matty Ace is going to make those necessary moves. Hopefully it doesn't get into his head. And I'm going with the Atlanta Braveyard because mainly because I want to see the rematch of the Season 1 Finals in the semifinals. <laughs> uh, so yeah. it's going to be interesting to see. So I'm going with the Atlanta Braveyard to win this one, and uh, hopefully we do get that rematch. Yeah, definitely. I feel like one of the big uh, things, does he start off with Cartana this time around um, to try and get set up early? Uh, and if so, do the Sevillans risk it, start off with Ho-Oh or start with something else? Um, so it's it's going to be very interesting to see some different strategies here, unless the Brave Raider just go all out and just go with an all offensive strategy to try and knock down the Sylveon. So again, uh, like you mentioned, just an exciting rematch, one that's going to be very close though. Um, but yeah. With that being said, the Mega Division, our predicted Mega Division semifinals, is going to be the King, or I guess Mega Division finals. Um, the Kentucky Kinglers versus the, excuse me, LA Inferno. Um, and then the Dynamax Division finals would be the uh, Miami Dragonites versus the Atlanta Bravery. So that's what we're predicting. Um, we'll go over the actual results next week, obviously. Um, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this week's roundup. It was an intense week five, a great finish to the season. A little anticlimactic because both last place teams lost. So the playoff um, spots were kind of cemented, but still some great matches nonetheless. Uh, and of course, you guys absolutely need to go check out the coaches down below because this Saturday we are kicking off the playoffs. This is it. This is the this is do or die. This is win or go home. Um, so you guys do not want to miss it this Saturday. We are kicking off um, and I'm super pumped to be a part of it uh, and also watch the other matches as well. And also, I'm super excited because we only have to cover four matches in, in the weekly roundups now. That's one less match for uh, for me to edit in, in the uh, post production for these shows. Um, but yeah, that's going to be for this one. Uh, Timmy, do you have any final words, my friend? You know what? We're recording this on Halloween Sunday, so I think uh, I'm going to go have some uh, candy. Ooh, candy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so hopefully y'all had also a great Halloween as well. Uh, if you went trick-or-treating, um, hopefully you got a lot of candy. <laughs> um, and yeah, Timmy's links will be right down below his channel, his socials, all that good stuff down below alongside my stuff. And again, alongside all the other coaches in the Elite Battle League, check out all that stuff down below. Uh, and yeah, see you guys later. Hope you all have a fantastic day. Bye.